Okay, we are recording our Chaos, Diversity, and Inclusion Working Group meeting today on Wednesday, March 18, 2020. Someone posted a big picture of a cat. That's not a cat. <laughs> it's a puppy. dog. That's my new puppy. Your new puppy. That's cool. Keep me occupied. Damn it, Daniel. Now I've got to go get a cup of tea. This is all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> so for today, the proposal is to start working on the documentation accessibility because I know several people need to leave uh, at the bottom of the hour. So I wanted to make sure that the progress we have made is discussed with everyone. And I feel like the documentation accessibility, which is linked in the meeting minutes. So if you're in the meeting minutes, you can go find that. And yeah, that's that's what I would like to start the meeting off. While we are on the agenda, are there other things that you wanna talk about? Just go ahead in the meeting minutes and add an item under notes so that we can get to that later. So let's go over to our project places, documentation accessibility. And for those of you who are maybe new, who have not been working with us on metrics before, the way this works is we are in a shared Google Doc. Everyone has 100% edit rights permissions and we do want you to make edits so go ahead if you if you're unsure about something like a larger change feel free to make a suggestion which you can change in your edit mode you can go into suggestion mode uh, you can place comments where you have thoughts or questions or where you want us to discuss and then we typically take uh, two, three minutes to start reading through it. Everyone works at their own pace. And then we start discussing what uh, we discovered or thought about while doing this. I don't even know what to call mine. What you're I'll just put something, I'll put something in there and then we'll, I guess, discuss it afterwards. Like and, what? And you, what I would add to it, because okay. like in regards to accessibility, one of the things that I deal with is you know, like the Great Firewall in China and internet accessibility in regards to it, not just. Gotcha. Yeah, it's, it's like diversity. <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to figure out how I would, uh, with, I'll, I'll just plug some stuff in and y'all can sit there and go and tell me what the actual term for it is and we'll just go from there. So. Um, That's a good approach. Yeah, just put things in here and we are revising all the time. So nothing we put in here is final unless we all agree there's no way we want to or can improve it. Awesome, thank you. Um, so um, just to go back for the little part in the you know, the first paragraph, the description. Um, are we able to have that discussion maybe after we do some editing? I think this description part is really where you wanted something added, Sally. So if you want to talk about it later, we can talk about it whenever you are ready for it. Yeah, yeah. So, so just not to delete that little bit until um, um, we get to do that. Okay. The remember the, the without disproportionately creating. You know that that is already marked for deletion. Just not to go ahead with that for now. Thanks. Thank you.
Okay, so I propose that we do start talking about the description because everything else flows from the description. Solid, do you want to kick off the conversation so that we can merge or reject the edits? Sala, uh, you're muted. I don't know if you're. Yeah, sorry. Uh, um, so yeah, I was actually in the other room. Uh, yeah, we have people at home and because they have symptoms, so that's a different story. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Question was, Sala, do you have on that first paragraph? Yeah. There was the, I think it's that section that was crossed out. Did you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so I, I honestly feel like I'm not sure where I would communicate what I'm trying to communicate here. Um, but I, I feel also that maybe I'm not able to express what the problem is exactly that I'm you know trying to find words for. And just, just for transparency, um, I do have a, uh, you know, a uh, kind of like a, like an expression barrier that I, I don't necessarily find a way to express things um, in more conventional ways. Um, I, I do write in a way that is an acquired taste or, um, you know, express in ways that um, some people might, might understand. Um, but a, a very common thing people say is get to the point, right? Uh, and I feel that I am and then um, that is where the barrier is. I can't really overcome that. Um, um, so for me, there it might not be that we want to add this particular statement here, um, but we also um, want to understand that documentation accessibility, if we are conforming to specifications, um, is one thing. If, if, if people are just um, consuming uh, things, but when you're collaborating and you're sharing resources that are meant to be um, accessible to everyone, um, then um, it actually becomes um, cause for friction when, when um, there is one predominant convention of going about documentation that basically creates, um, um, you know, a lot of additional um, trouble, I guess, or, you know, additional noise for people who do not consume it either um, using the original written format, like screen reader, for instance, um, or if um, they have visual and cognitive uh, challenges. And then, um, you know, so, so I just, I don't know how, how to express that, but I know for a fact that it's very, very important. Can so I ask a question? Sure. I, th I understand what you're saying and you're, you're talking about the crossed out sentence particularly, right? Yes. So is there, are there mechanisms that provide a kind of a safety net to prevent that? So I, I get, I think the way I understand what you're saying is that if, if we're aiming towards documentation accessibility, that's great. However, there are particular caveats that may come with doing that. That it's not just a perfect linear path. Uh, yeah, I, I feel the, the reason for the disconnect comes from the fact that most of us don't look close enough at documentation written in, in formats for different consumers. Um, none of us really said, okay, I'll just try a screen reader for a week. Um, we don't have that available example, that available knowledge to say, oh, this is written nice, but this will definitely not be good for a screen reader. Um, sure. So are there, are there guidelines that help kind of um, identify that, that we could reference? I, 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 I think I'm fully understanding where you're going, and I'm just trying to think of 
because of the way the sentence is written right now, it says without disproportionately creating or perpetuating um, artificial debts. I, I totally agreed. So are there mechanisms that help um, prevent that? Are there, um, are there resources that, that we could point to that I, bring that to bear? I think most people I asked uh, about this kind of thing said, oh, you know, the, the new criteria for cognitive, visual, and so forth, this is all very new. You should wait a few years. Um, okay. So maybe what we want to be doing is saying, uh, at this point, there are no standard practices. Um, and so maybe documenting them as you, as you, uh, as you go through this uh, metric. Okay. Um, if that's something we could do, you know, we could ask people, you know, what mechanisms do you use? And if people say we don't have any, then, you know, hopefully one at least will be like, oh, we do this. And then we would recommend to them something, you know. So are the, the objectives below Sala, are some of those addressing this point? So you had mentioned, for example, screen readers. I know that's not the full, um, full litany of things that you're talking about, but so for example, you know, being attentive to accessibility with screen readers and being attentive to technical jargon and being attentive to structural clarity, do those help offset that sentence? Um, so I, I think, I think they do if they are viewed in the context of between the different formats, right? Okay. So, so, um, so, you know, maybe I'm, I'm just, um, um, you know, looking at this with a less conventional way of reading this. Um, mm -hmm. um, but does, do these objective ki objectives kind of align with the idea that a person would compare those, um, um, you know, those aspects across the different formats? I mean, we know people do not uh, really try the accessible version uh, thoroughly. I mean, they definitely make sure that if there are tests to be run or, uh, you know, if there's at least some checking, even manual checking, uh, along with ARIA, of course, um, they kind of, um, you know, um, they're very distant from the extensive UX um, um, familiarity and, and, and uh, verbosity that we go about when we're creating the mainstream user experience. So let me make a suggestion then based on this. Could we take the sentence that is crossed out right now that I have highlighted and move it down as a lead in sentence on the objectives? So that way that sentence is more tied. Oh, great. Yeah. To I, the I, objectives. I, I, I think that would help, and uh, paraphrasing it obviously if, if needed. Um, but but I think that's really going in the direction I was, um, you know. So yeah, we could rework the sentence a little bit, but just tying it a bit more to what those objectives are meant to help overcome or help address. What yes. do people What do people think on that? Other Doesn't make sense to tie it in with the objective. Okay. Um, to say we need to balance the objectives. And then the other thing I wanted to mention also is the sentence that comes right before the striked out sentence that is suggested there was my attempt at paraphrasing or rewriting that struck out sentence. Okay. So a uh, question, Georg, do you think that sentence could belong under the objectives or do you think it really does fit in the description? I leave that up to everyone who has read this for the first time. Let's remove the struck out sentence so it's a little bit cleaner. Are we good to move ahead with that? Uh, yeah. I'll do that. Yeah. I'll yeah, do that. Let's do that. Yeah. And then let's Thank take a look at the description and how it looks now. And oh, and somebody rewrote a little bit on the objectives. So. Yeah, sorry. I'm working on rewriting it. I'm not entirely happy either. So feel free to keep. It, it, it looks like, a, yeah. Has a... uh, it, because yeah, yeah, the struck out one wasn't a sentence. So now yeah, so I'm trying to make it a sentence. A sentence. Jelaine, I think oh, yeah, I think every time you go off of mute, mute, it creates a tremendous echo for the rest. Thanks. 
I, I, I yes. <laughs> I think you've got some microphone audio issues. Audio issues. It should be better now. I've been dealing with different devices. Somebody, <laughs> let me try somebody. it. Now. Let me try it now. Let me try it now. Nope. Nope. Not better at all. Sorry. Sorry, Jelaine. Sorry. <laughs> um, you Zoom, know, Zoom's hard sometimes. Yeah, and, and you can always uh, use the telephone audio. So I know some people prefer to use the browser-based uh, UI, and then they but they just uh, phone in, um, and that helps. Interestingly, I tried to, to phone in. That was my first, second option, and I didn't get through. It was like I got a busy signal. I got like... <laughs> Um, yeah, so I went back to trying different laptops. Is it better now? We don't know. We don't know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, we could type, and you can leave your microphone on, and this way we wouldn't get feedback. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, just make sure you either use the mic or talk, right? So, or, or yeah, maybe or how, how about this, Jelaine? If you if you um, want to chime in, you can raise your hand. When you talk, there's no feedback. It's when we talk that it tr creates feedback. So if you go to manage participants down at the bottom, I think you can just raise your hand and then I don't know if that works. I think or physically have... raise your hand and we can. Yeah, or physically. Although I think she's frozen now. I do she's too. probably not hearing any of it. <laughs> okay. I'm sure that there's probably there's probably a limit on phone lines with Zoom because of what's happening with everyone working from home. So I'm okay. sure that phone lines are getting overloaded because there's only so many of those I think that they can actually allocate. Mm -hmm. So um, that makes sense that it would be one of the first things to break on Zoom. That does make sense, particularly if it's a, like an old circuit switch kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I wrote, rewrote that sentence, first sentence of the objectives. Okay. Does that... Does that resonate with people? In particular, Sala, I'm curious. Yeah, I'm uh, trying to give it a read. Yes, one sec. Hi, sorry, I got the phone to work. I'm giving up on the uh, various laptops. So now so we we now <laughs> there, no uh, hey, no feedback. Yeah, that's good. Yay. <laughs> sorry about <laughs> that, you guys. I just no, no <laughs> are, are you using Windows or Linux or Mac? I tried it on both a Mac OS machine with a Chrome from the Chrome browser and from the Chrome browser on an Ubuntu machine. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was actually working okay on the Ubuntu machine, but you guys were really garbled. I don't know why, so then I tried to switch. <laughs> anyway. I'm glad I, we figured I just it out. probably need to, what's that? I was just saying I'm glad we figured it out. Yeah, I think I don't know. It, are you guys all from the web browser or do you have the uh client downloaded on your various different machines? Client. I download the client. 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 Okay. Client. All right. Well, there you go. <laughs> 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 I will download the client <laughs> before my next Zoom meeting. <laughs> okay, so going back to the objectives, I like the sentence how it weeks now. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, yeah, it flows very nicely and it's it leads very nicely. Um, I guess the last question is: I feel that the users of documentations have different abilities. Part that you know in the in the first paragraph of description second sentence uh, in red. I believe this kind of leads into, um, um, into the very nicely rewritten uh, um, opener of the objectives. Um, I feel that um, it may not be necessary in the description, um, but it, it kind of like gives context on what we're talking about certain segments. Um, it kind of elaborates that you know different um, formats um, have kind of like you know become the context. So so when the word different segments is uh, certain segments is used, um, it adds uh, you know um, it, it ties together to it 
Um, does everybody feel, you know, it's, is it worth moving it or just keeping it there? I'm fine with where it is, but. Yeah, then that's fine. No, like it, it really is um, great that we figured out where to keep this. Thank you, everyone. No, thanks for bringing it yeah, up. I, um, I just want to under make sure I understand something because, of course, I was like in and out. So I think I heard. So I think I heard you saying something about how like some of the I know, standard is the right word for accessibility are um, still evolving or immature. So in other words, I kind of, from what I heard, it sounds like you know you might today do the best you can do, say, like meeting these objective, objectives about accessibility, but like some of the options for that today may not be great. Uh, and yeah. so, like, what, was there a point about like acknowledging that, that, that options for better accessibility may evolve and get better, so this shouldn't also shouldn't be a static thing? No, or am I reading too much? I think I think the the disconnect happened when we went from traditional, uh, you know, you know, non-digital society, um, where accessibility was also highlighted in in recent years. Um, it was it was um, it was always there. There was always a, a person when you had any any access to a service. There was always a person that made sure that a person who has accessibility needs um, na navigate. Yeah towards um, being, you know, party to that service. Um, but when we go digital, uh, basically it's self-serve, you know, and, and, you know, survival of the fittest, whoever knows how to, how to get around. But we do design the UX to fast track um, uh, a mainstream individual, as in a, an individual who knows how, um, uh, you know, some might qualify an able person. I don't like that description, but that, and um, they know how to, um, you know, do their job good enough to be able to, um, you know, navigate um, whatever service or resource that is. Um, there is no, um, you know, assistance for someone with access accessibility needs to get to whatever they're trying to do. Um, on a computer that doesn't exist so so they end up with additional burdens um, because the main, the main um, focus is to fast track people who are good um, and then um, you know n not as much for people who are who need accessibility and are good i i don't know if that helped <laughs> So there is a yeah, no, that was great. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's, that's uh, um, yeah, great right. explanation. Well, thank you. So I feel like we already made some progress. I know sometimes progress feels slow, but we've been discussing this for the last three weeks. So I'm very happy we resolved this issue. Thank you, everyone who helped with this. Going back to the description, do we all agree on the description? Now, there's one question mark in here. Yeah, I, some of the description was kind of fading between documentation and documentation accessibility. That's all. And I just think the description, so I don't know if that first sentence is actually about accessibility. I think that sentence is really about documentation because documentation about the process and practices in a community is what empowers or knowledge about these. So I would remove this accessibility. That's fine. 
So Georg, you had mentioned that some people have to leave at the bottom of the hour. I'm just reminding people that it is currently the bottom of the hour, if you happen to be one of those people. Okay. So, um, objectives. Um, Simona, did you add something to the objectives? I saw you working on something. I did. I added some stuff to the objectives. I also added some additional resources. So I used to be, I'm not as much anymore, in fact, Sharon and I are supposed to go out lunch, super involved with a group in Austin called Nobility, um, which used, uh, they were like one of the super early groups to start doing the codathons to help a lot of people take their websites and things and make them handicapped accessible. And so they were kind of focused more on um, the specific type of accessibility, but I posted those and, and the Bureau of Internet Accessibility as well, um, which talks about the different categories and those do kind of fit, focus on things like vision and um, hearing and things of that nature. Um, but what I added was a little different um, because I think y'all are covering a lot of that stuff well. Um, what I added was stuff that I don't see normally covered, which was the, um, thank you for whoever named it, geographic access, but the fact that a lot of times in certain countries, people can't access things, like if they're in Google Docs or you know, things of that nature. And then also that a lot of our users um, are also limited in devices, especially in poorer countries where they only have mobile available to them. Um, and so going in and doing that, I think some of this might also be in some of the problems that people are having right now with the kids home from school, um, because they're gonna have a lot of those same accessibility issues um, where, you know, of course, some of it we can't address like if they don't have internet, but some of them only have internet via their phones or some of them only have, um, you know, so they can only see documents on mobile devices or they, you know, or can only edit them even. Um, and we all know how extremely painful that is. Um, but a lot of different things along those lines. And so I, I, I kind of, I don't know if that was outside of y'all's definition or not, but in regards to the scope of accessibility, because I, I looked at the definition and y'all didn't limit it to um, physical disabilities. So um, I kind of went for uh, some of the other things, especially those involving um, uh, class. So um, those, those are what I added, but I was like trying to think of some more that I've seen happen in regards to that. What was the issue with having kids home? I didn't follow that part. So um, there, because of the, you know, COVID-19, there's yep. a ton of kids that are having to do schooling from home yep. and their schools are having requirements uh, in regards to their homework and what they need to do I and see. how they need to I do gotcha. it. And so like on some of my neighborhood lists, there's a ton of people doing calls out for computer, you know, if anybody has a computer that, that has the camera on it that they could donate or anything along those lines so that the kids can do their schoolwork because, I, yeah, not all kids have computers. They all have phones. <laughs> yep, I got, I got you. That's fair. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank so, you. Okay. Welcome. So thank you very much for adding those, Simona. That's really good. So I think we have the description, we have the objectives. The implementation is the most um, challenging part because, uh, yes, you wanna say something? Uh, yes, I found something in the description. Uh, it's kind of, repetitive so maybe we can work on the phrasing this a bit uh, documentation third line we have the empower participants making a second appearance Sorry, could you highlight the the line uh, with your cursor so yeah okay. perfect Okay, thank you. Oh, sorry, no, wrong line. And we have actually empower in the description twice. I think that maybe that one, Sala. Hmm. 
I don't know if we, maybe we just remove the second paragraph altogether because in the beginning, the first sentence is, we are saying accessibility is critical to, to the role of documentation in open source projects. And the second paragraph is all about why documentation is super important. I'd be fine with that because it would get rid of my earlier statement that this description is moving between documentation, full stop, and documentation accessibility, second item. And by removing it, we focus only on documentation accessibility on this page. And yep. we assume this first sentence, it's super critical. That's the baseline we all agree on. We don't have to reiterate and explain that. I would prefer that. Yeah, that whole paragraph could. I think that part's important though, isn't it? Sorry, what part are we now talking about? The part, the anonymous dingo is highlighting right now. Oh, you're moving, I see. So I, I, I thought, um, um, you know, to, to just balancing out the sentences, I thought the, yeah, this order kind of, you know, um, the first one talks about documentation accessibility. The second one um, personalizes it um, or specializes it um, by, by describing how it's, how documentation is used. Um, and then the third one realigns it back with documentation accessibility um, as, as you know, fr from the perspective of the project or the com community um, and its contributors. Um, yeah, it's- Yeah, it's, that makes it's a de definitely better order, I agree. Yeah, so the last question just to have, so we can be done with that. Um, so the word points of view, um, there is another word that uh, that is uh, that rings more closely and frame of reference so point of view is where you stand frame of reference is how you uh, how your experience um and and your your capacity um um you know affects how how you do something um so so you know two people who sit in the same spot can experience the world very, very different because each of them has their own frame of reference. Um, so so are, are you guys good with that change? I think you could actually, I think that's a really good point. Uh, yeah, points of view is definitely not right, but I'm not even sure you need to add frame of reference. In other words, I think you could actually end the sentence requiring it to be offered in different formats to be equally empowering for these different users, period. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about concise descriptions, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to add a page and, and figure out where I'm going to add the phrase frame of reference now. It's a good phrase. I agree with you. I like it better than point of view. <laughs> but then when people, I was like, oh, actually. <laughs> they're not interchangeable though. And, and, and it's very, very no, hard no, to, they're not. to use which, right? So yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I know I am an ass or an asshole. Actually, I qualify for the full term sometimes. Oh, no, 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 no. Just but keep, but that's a good, uh, it's a good phrase to keep in mind because it could be, it might be very useful somewhere else. Yeah, uh, in a different, you know, point of view. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <right>. But I'm fun. <laughs> Oh, this is super niggly. Are we using periods at the end of each bullet or not? We are sometimes, apparently. I prefer not bullets, but just a preference thing. Okay. Well, I yeah, I go both. 
I guess it's down here that this is if there's more than one sentence then you get kinda stuck, so I guess let me where are you? Are you in the objectives? I see. Yes. Okay. I got rid of the one that was in that was there. That is there, whatever. Okay. Actually, I'd, in that case, I'd be okay with the periods at the end because they are sentences. So um, last week on Wednesday, I basically was inspired by that discussion we were having for the description. And I requested from GitHub the um, um, you know, uh, alternative format documentation. Um, um, I have an issue. I'm tracking the whole thing. Um, and basically, they report according to government requirements on their website that they do meet the um, you know necessities, including um, providing alternative formats as um, requested by the users. I followed every single pro step in the process, and basically they responded yesterday. We do not offer alternative formats. Uh, so so yeah, um, you know, um, it took me so many steps to get a human person to actually respond. And clearly, the human person has no clue that the same website, GitHub, declares publicly uh, pro forma that they do support. Um, and following that process just to get a human being to talk, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's sadly very shameful. So I have, I don't care how much, right, not that I care. I don't know how much time we want to spend on it, but um, just from a structural perspective on the objectives, they don't all start the same. I know that sounds funny, but some start with verbs, some start with nouns. Do we care about that? So for example, some start with making, making document. So for the last one, blind or visually impaired, making documentation accessible here. People are mainly reading text. Um, there's a making up above as well. Yeah, that was bothering me as well. And in Edit some cases mine, we're using- however you want. <laughs> in some cases they're past tense, in some cases they're current tense. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I was struggling person. with that too. I'm an idea person. <laughs> no, oh, I notice it, but I don't want to. I don't want to fix it because that's. You kind of have to end up. You end up rewriting. <laughs> well, I don't think they're all. It's that, not just um, yours. Not just yours. All of them. Oh no! Yeah, it wasn't an accusation. <laughs> I blame Salam. Um, I have no. I don't know if they can all be the same. I don't think they can all start with the doc. You know. Some, I mean, like if you look at the first couple, documentation is accessible, documentation is easy to find, blah, blah, and then use an appropriate level of, oh, uh, yeah, we could change that, actually. <laughs> yeah, they, can, they, <laughs> they can be all made parallel. <laughs> I mean, this is what I do all day, guys. Yeah. <laughs> So as you're rewriting them, please change into edit mode. We don't need these all as suggestions. Just go ahead and edit it. Oh, okay, sorry. Someone can.
Selena, I see your lips moving, but you're on mute. Thank you. Um, I was thinking one of the things we could change on the navigable portion is I think one standard is if we do things for the um, for the screen reader or for any of the input devices, if we put that in there, um, that will, um, I think there is a standard for that to make sure that we cover. But there is also, I think, the access of mobile users um, as well so that they can actually still um, pop through things. And I think those are the two main standards that you would have to worry about would be those two. Um, because I think most of the alternative, alternative um, input devices normally um, work off of the, um, uh, the keyboard. So, so as long as you have keyboard, you have most of the physical devices that exist out there, but you still won't cover the mobile um, people. Well. Mm. Um, is it Jelaine? Is that how I say it? Um, yeah. The thing for the Great Firewall in China, the reason I'm putting that there is because of the use cases so that if y'all want to rewrite it so that it helps cover those people, then that yeah. works. Um, it's just that I just always put in use cases because then um, <clears throat> I know that my writing isn't perfect and I know that my use cases illustrate things better. I mean, so. it's a great, like, it's a great example and I guess my <laughs> my question is just even being familiar with some of the lockdown that companies do which is another good point I mean having talked yep. to someone just yesterday he like couldn't access a google doc and you're like oh my god yeah and um that like, like I would I feel periodically like do that <clears throat> yeah I feel like sometimes I don't want to say it's insurmountable, but like there's not much you can do as a project other than say not using that, but like it's hard to accommodate all the myriad of bands that companies come up with without even getting to the great firewall, right? Right. So one of the things that I found is um, it, it's always dangerous to use as a service um, for that reason, mm -hmm. because that's how they normally go about blocking it. Um, and so I don't know how to properly illustrate that, but like I'm, you know, I was at LF and ran into this problem often, and that's why I transitioned them over to um, a hosted version of Confluence and Jira, even though it wasn't open source. And I'm doing something similar with IEEE, um, but I am focusing more on open source so that if it's, when it's internally hosted, they're much less likely to um, block you. Uh, and so uh, that's one of the things that we're looking at. I don't know if that's always possible for everyone, but um, it ends up being safer. Like the Great Firewall doesn't block the Linux Foundation and it doesn't block the IEEE, but you know, it does All block right. Google. Does that kind of capture it? Oh, I just. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for making me articulate uh, it so that I could say the as a service platforms. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, that was good. Doc, wait, but then we have documentation that can be accessed by users and who may, it's, it's not just countries who. Yeah, it's not just countries. Uh, internet restrictions. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word. <laughs> Paranoid corporate policies. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically anything that they, they you know, because I watch it like PayPal, they would do it periodically. Like suddenly, you know, we'd all be using Google Docs and suddenly they shut off Google Docs for, you know, a week and then everybody would be like, Rawr! and they'd enable it again and then they'd shut it all off again. <laughs> um, and I know some keep it completely turned off all of the time. And so, um, 
but they never block the individual sites. You have to be on something that's like big and massive because normally they don't, you know, that it's a not completely true for China right now, but normally China blackballs you, right? And companies blackball you and they kind of go off of that kind of methodology. They don't go over the, we're gonna block everything and then only let some things in. The majority of them just do that. And so if you do it, if you hide yourself, honestly, or you're a nonprofit or you're an entity like that and you self-host, then um, they don't uh, block it. Do we need this for example now? No. Okay. Like I said, I'm not egotistical about my writing at all. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm an ideas person. Don, I'll tell you this. No, that's great. I mean, I figured that's what you're doing. Like, I do the same thing. Sometimes you just write, get it out of your brain before you lose it. <laughs> or get it down on paper before you lose it, right? And as you can tell, I go no, out good. of the box, too. Because, you know, it's like, okay, poor people. Okay, people in other countries. Okay, you know, I, I try to go yeah. outside of the, because we didn't go into that, you know, we didn't sit there and say physical dif disabilities, right? We sat there and we said, yeah. you know, in, any of those. And so it's just kind of like, okay, so if that's true, then, you know, who are some of, because to me, you know, for me, the biggest one is always, you know, the, the less privileged and how do we make sure that they have access um, and, you know, keep remembering them as well. So. Absolutely. I'm still kind of chuckling at our appropriate level of technical jargon. <laughs> Matt, I'm going with the period now because it seems like we started a trend in that direction at the bottom half. Uh, sort of. So the mobile and navigable access, that's a good, I mean, should we combine those or is there a different? Uh, so I put both of those in there. Um, you know, I, I don't know um, on that. It may, you know, I put that it may overlap. Um, the main reason I put that is because sometimes it's not just talking about mobile people with navigable access. Um, and with mobile people, it's not just navigation, it's also readability. Um, right. So that's why I kind of kept them separate. Um, yeah. You might so want to change it to readability on various devices and then navigable on various um, devices. I don't know. Well, I'm trying to think maybe a different, I mean, it feels like they are different, but they are related. So if we could, maybe it's like, um, shoot, I thought, like it's, uh, how would I title this? Um, varied it's like access via varied devices so if i just let me see and the access and is nav i mean wow mm -hmm. that might just if you just do that I think I like, I mean, mobile is pretty specific, but I think that's kind of appropriate given, you know, that may be the only kind of computer that people have. But then I just said, or devices other than laptops and desktops, because that's kind of what we're getting at. Like, it's not just, it's not assuming that you're only on a laptop or a desktop, right? I think that's right. In terms of being able to get to it, A, and then being able to navigate it once you get to it. Right. Totally. Yeah. I was talking with Manrique uh, about this, and he said he was on the W3C uh, standard body for the mobile accessibility back in the day. And he was telling stories about how back then you made sure each menu item matched a number so that you could just use the little number pads <laughs> on, your, uh, on your phone. <laughs> Um, Thank God for smartphones <laughs> and touch screens. 
Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's why I understand why we want to put non laptop use, but I think mobile access is the term that most people are familiar with. So that's. So can, can we get rid of the second one? Because we've moved navigated. It's kind of. Sure. Yeah. All input tools. Is that better than laptops at my specificity? I don't know. I, just, I think people will be like, Mer, what the hell is an input tool? That's me. That's me in that their jargon. <laughs> okay. Got it. I understand mobile devices, other devices, and other devices other than. Oh. Yeah, whatever. It's fine. Does awesome. anyone think of anything oh, else that can do to, to help with people that are um, that don't have money <laughs> that are working primarily off of mobile? I mean, like we can't obviously we can't do the whole printing thing and all that kind of stuff. But you know what I found honestly, and I've done a lot of research on these. Like even in developing countries, um, many people still have access to a cell phone, um, and most of them have access, and more and more of them are getting access to smartphones. So, um, right. you know, even in Africa and um, uh, certain places in India, things of that nature. Um, do you think that we need anything about, I think that's, I think that probably covers it because I think we are, we are kind of consciously being myopic about electronic documentation. Um, yeah. I was just trying to sit there and think if there was any other stuff that it's not scope creeping that would cover more people. Now, what I found interesting is people in different countries, sometimes even when they're very poor, will have multiple cell phones. <laughs> it's like, what? Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's an interesting thing. I mean, as someone who has both the, the thought of trying to like say do a pull request on github via my phone seems like impossible not necessarily i've never looked at it i mean not necessarily because of github has done something wrong but because i can't deal with the small screen <laughs> yeah yeah but i guess when you're younger that's less of an issue <laughs> Well, it's pretty funny. My hubby, you know, he manages large scale networks, cloud infrastructures. And you'd be surprised at what that man can do on his cell phone when he's motivated and he doesn't want to go home and play on his computer. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I know. I, yeah, I think that's, um, like, given the choice, I will go to personally, I will like much prefer to be on a bigger screen and have a keyboard. But there's, yeah, you're right. There's lots of people who are, I, I think I'm like the minority or something. Uh, <laughs> there's lots of people who are like incredibly adept at doing all kinds of things by our cell phones. So oh, I want to interject here as the facilitator for today. We are almost out of time. I wanted to thank you very much for working today on the description objectives. I think we have made a lot of progress. And I propose that next uh, week we work on the implementation and then hopefully be done with this, um, at least to the point where we can enter it into the release phase where we say, hey, we open it up for feedback and get more eyes on this. So thank you for all of your time and input and fun today. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, that was fun guys. Bye.